talked about the power in sometimes limping in with strong hands from early position as it protects you from being raised from players in late position. So in this hand with 3 million won antis, Elton Zhang limps in with ace-queen offsuit from under the gun, which causes several players to limp in behind him. Tom Dwan from the button picks up a premium hand in pocket kings, which is an obvious raise, but he could also be raising with many other hands as well to steal the dead money. So now Zhang, realizing that Dwan only starts the hand with 95 antis, decides to go for it and raises to 150 million. He obviously has the chance that Dwan will fold to his raise, and that chance, coupled with the fact that when he's called his hand still has decent equity, can sometimes make this a profitable play. As you can see, he's a 60 to 39% underdog against pocket kings. But when you look at some of the other hands that Dwan might raise and call with, we see that actually he has 38% equity against those hands. In fact, ace-queen offsuit is most likely the worst hand that Zhang should ever do this with. And hands like 9-10 suited or jack-10 suited fare slightly better against Duan's calling range with about 42% equity. Here they get it in, and we see not such an uncommon result in short deck in that the worst hand wins, and in this case, scoops a 597 million won pot. Let's take a look at a much closer scenario here and not quite as deep, at about 69 antis effective, and Duan is the one that limps in under the gun. He has jack-10 offsuit, which is an okay hand in short deck. It gets limped over to Tan Chuan, and he decides to just move all in with ace jack of hearts to pick up the antis and the limps. He's shoving 206 million won to win 36 million. Now Tom Duan decides to just go all in with his jack-10 offsuit and shut out the other people in the hand as well. It's an interesting spot and Duan chooses to be very aggressive, but when we take a look at the actual hand matchup, you can see that Duan is a significant underdog. But if you take a look at the range of hands that Chuan might shove with, you can see that Duan has 42% equity in this spot against those hands. However, this was a really large shove by Chuan. How much equity did Duan really need here? In order to do this calculation, we simply add the amount of chips Duan has to call to the total pot size after the shove. Then we take the calling amount and divide by that total. This is a very quick way to get the percentage needed in a hand, and it's not unique to short deck. Duan actually needs just under 46% equity to make this call, so a case could be made that Duan's decision was slightly losing. As we see, however, he didn't lose the hand, and that's something that happens quite a bit in short deck. As we've already looked at limp re-raising to pick up a lot of dead money, another powerful tool to win antis is to implement a play we like to call a back raise. A back raise happens when a player limps in after others have limped in, and then a player in position raises. Those first limpers call, and then the over limping player back raises. And that picks up a whole bunch of dead money. And that's exactly what happens here as it gets limped in four ways to Tom Duan, and he raises it up with King 10 suited to 30 million won. Then we see a few of the limpers call from up front, and when it gets over to Paul Foy, there's so much dead money out there, and he has an okay hand with King Jack offsuit, that he just decides to jam. And that's a profitable jam. He's actually risking 200 million won to win 105 million, and when it gets over to Duan, he has a very interesting scenario here, because he can't call, he has to jam all in or fold and he's going to be getting a really, really good price of just under two to one, 176 million won for a pot of 305 million. So he needs about 36.5% equity here to call. And we can take a look at some of the hands that Fua would do this with. So Duan has nearly 50% equity against those hands. All the other players fold out and Duan does make the call and he's actually in bad shape, but we can't think of it that way because we don't know what our opponent specifically holds. And the whole idea of this is that you can make this call because if Paul Foy actually had a very strong hand, he would have raised over the limpers for the first time himself. So when he waits and makes this play, he'll often end up with a mediocre holding that's trying to win the dead money. So Duan makes the right call, and although he's behind, he actually gets lucky, hits a 10, 
and wins a 484 million won pot. So here we have another example of back raising, this time from a different session in Montenegro with 2,000 euro antis. Several limps over here to Roy Cow in the cutoff, and he raises it up to 26,000 euros. Paul Fua calls on the button, Daniel Cates after limping under the gun also calls, and that sets up a scenario where there's 88,000 euros in dead money in the pot. So when it gets back around to Bazukowski with him having 130 antis, it sets up a situation where he thinks he has a profitable shove to pick up the 88,000 euros in dead money. Once the original razor and the button both fold, Cates has an interesting decision because he himself has a somewhat strong hand, and if Bazukowski had had a premium holding, he most likely would have raised first after Cates limped in. So when Bazukowski back raises here, Cates is getting a good price and only needs 40% equity to call. If we take a look at the actual hands, we can see Cates is a 52% favorite to win. And if we look at the most likely hands that Bazalkowski would hold in this scenario, and it's important to take out the super premium hands because those hands would have raised initially, Cates has 50% equity versus that range. They run it twice, and they end up chopping the pot, with Cates making a royal flush on the second run. As you can see, there's quite a lot of maneuverability in playing hands from out of position in short deck because of the amount of dead money in the pot, especially when somebody in position raises. Remember in short deck, the equities between a lot of hands run very close, so you're never all that far behind. 